In this episode, we focus on the boxing career of one of the great bare-knuckle fighters turned boxers. How good was Jake Kilrain? John Joseph Killian was born on February 9, 1859, in Greenpoint, New York. He took on the surname Kilrain to hide his pro career from his parents early on. Kilrain stood 5 feet 10 and a half inches. He had an aggregate weight of 191 pounds for his career. Kilrain's career spanned from 1879 to 1899. He had 31 wins, 5 losses, and 8 draws. 18 of his victories were by knockout. He also had 3 no decision bouts. He had a winning percentage of 66 and a knockout percentage of 38. Kilrain is associated with the heavyweight division. Jake Kilrain had excellent endurance as a fighter which served him fighting under the Marquess of Queensbury rules. He wasn't known for his power but had enough punch to keep fighters honest. He was also a reasonably crafty fighter who could work well in the clinch and fare very decently from the outside as he possessed a bit of bounce. Coupled with his endurance came an ability to take a good deal of punishment throughout a fight. Kilrain got his first significant opponent on January 15, 1882, when he stepped in the ring with Hall of Fame, former colored world heavyweight champion, Old Chocolate George Godfrey in Boston. Both undefeated at the time, the two men fought to a three-round draw in this contest. Kilrain and Godfrey would meet again on May 16, 1883, again in Boston. The two men had both remained unbeaten under the Marquess of Queensbury rules to this point. Kilrain won this contest as he stopped Godfrey in the third round as police intervened to break up the fight. Some sources reported the fight as a win for Godfrey. There were also reports of the fight being a draw. Kilrain's next test came at the hands of British middleweight and heavyweight contender, Charlie Mitchell, on March 26, 1884. While generally weighing around the middleweight limit, Mitchell's most high-profile fights came at heavyweight. Mitchell, a clever outside fighter, used his elusiveness to stay away from anything punishing by Kilrain. Mitchell also dropped Kilrain with a body shot in the third round of the four-round contest. In the end, the fight would be declared a draw. Kilrain would also fight to a five-round draw with Irish heavyweight contender Jack Burke in December of 1884. On February 18, 1890, Kilrain would step in with future undisputed world heavyweight champion, Gentleman Jim Corbett, in a six-round contest in New Orleans, Louisiana. Corbett was on the offensive from the start of the fight and forced Kilrain on his back foot. Kilrain was bloodied and bruised, including two black eyes, and lost the six-round decision. On March 13, 1891, Kilrain would again step in the ring with Old Chocolate George Godfrey as they settled the score once and for all, this time in San Francisco. Kilrain weighed in at 192 to 174 for Godfrey. Godfrey started things aggressively, but Kilrain landed the cleaner punches in the early part of the contest. Godfrey repeatedly found himself clinching to keep Kilrain from landing heavy combinations. By the ninth round, Godfrey angered Kilrain by repeatedly punching him in the chest near the heart during clinches. The two men otherwise fought relatively even through the better part of the first 24 rounds. Kilrain tried to finish Godfrey in the 25th round though a groggy Godfrey recovered to land several hard blows of his own. The two men exchanged moments with the upper hand through the 30th when Kilrain started to gain an edge, doling out heavy punishment to Godfrey over the next several rounds. Kilrain rushed Godfrey repeatedly as Godfrey continued to tire. In the 44th round, Kilrain would knock out Godfrey to end the fight after nearly three hours of exchanging blows. The crowd in attendance celebrated the contest with excitement and applause. Kilrain's next fight would occur on June 16, 1891, when he took on Frank Slavin. Slavin was defending some form of a Police Gazette championship belt, the Police Gazette being the leading sporting newspaper at the time. The fight took place in Hoboken, New Jersey. The two men battled back and forth to start, with Slavin landing many rib shots before Kilrain got in some good work to Slavin's head to grab the edge in the round. A similar script played out in the second. 
The tide shifted in the third round as Slavin caught Kilrain with a hard straight right to the left ear, sending him to the canvas. Kilrain was able to get to his feet, though groggy. Not long afterward, he would again be sent to the canvas and could barely rise before the bell, sending the betting odds haywire. Kilrain was dropped again at the beginning of the fourth, bloodying his nose. He would be sent down three additional times before the round ended. It was clear at this point that Slavin would be the victor. After being dropped a few more times, the referee would essentially stop the fight after the ninth round, saving the bloodied and badly beaten Kilrain further damage. In his last major fight, Kilrain would have a return bout with Frank Slavin on September 14, 1896, in Baltimore, Maryland. Kilrain was woefully out of shape and was knocked out in the first round after less than two and a half minutes. Kilrain would have a failed comeback attempt in 1899, being stopped in five rounds by Steve O'Donnell, handing O'Donnell a third victory in three meetings. Kilrain's legacy was mainly established during his time as a bare-knuckle fighter, but he was a solid-gloved boxer and fought some decent opponents during this phase of his career. His most memorable fight and memory are tied to his bare-knuckle world heavyweight matchup with John L. Sullivan in a losing effort. Unlike Sullivan, Kilrain took on George Godfrey, who was regarded as the era's number one or number two black heavyweight. Kilrain faced two Hall of Famers. His most notable fights were against Hall of Famer George Godfrey Hall of Famer Jim Corbett and Frank Slavin Jake Kilrain died on December 22, 1937, at 78. Kilrain has a lasting legacy in boxing and is one of the high-profile names of the late 1800s. He parlayed a bare-knuckle career into a successful career under the new boxing rules during his time. He was a fighter willing to step in the ring with the best of his day, regardless of color. Kilrain was inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame in 2012.